Good morning and welcome once again to our worship here on Facebook and YouTube. It's good to know that as the weeks have gone by, more and more people have come and uh, joined us in our worship, both locally and from further afield across the country. And you are all welcome. And it's a joy and a privilege to be able to gather together here once again. We'll be looking this morning at the idea of the church as the priesthood of all believers. And what does that mean to us generally and in these most trying of times? But first, we're going to begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Holy, loving and forgiving God, it is a joy and a privilege to be able to come into your presence here this morning, to praise and to worship you, to know that you are our God and we are your people, created out of nothing by your voice, loved from the moment that you made us. A love that has stretched through centuries, sending prophets and priests to guide your people. Until when the time was right, you sent your son Jesus to come and be our saviour, that living demonstration of your love. He came and lived among us as a preacher, a teacher, a healer, a worker of miracles. He went to the cross and died that through his death and his resurrection on the third day, we could experience your love in our lives once again. And we know that it is a love that we don't deserve. A love that we haven't earned. It's a love which is given by your grace. A love which reaches out to us in our need, in our failing, and offers us forgiveness because we know we have fallen short of what you call us to be. There are things that we've done which we shouldn't have. Things that we've not done that we should have done. But we know that your love is forgiving. And if we will trust in you, reach out to you and ask your forgiveness, then we are forgiven. And for that, we give you thanks. And so we bring to you our time of worship this morning. May it be acceptable in your sight. May our words, our thoughts reflect your love for us and for the world because we offer our prayers in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. So we join our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymns this morning are more 
choral than sing along. So I hope you'll enjoy listening to them and feel free to join in uh, if you do know the words. But we're going to start with uh, John Rutter's wonderful setting of For the Beauty of the Earth. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, 
and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. For those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Like any good Methodist preacher, I'm always trying to get three points in my sermon. And today's reading is really helpful in that it breaks down really nicely into three things. And so today we're going to be thinking about the fact that we are living stones, the fact that we are a royal priesthood, and the fact that Jesus is the cornerstone. Let's start with the first of those, that we are living stones. Yeah, one thing we've had to get our heads around over the last few months is being church without a building. Because we're used to physical stones, bricks and mortar. They tend to define us. They tend to be the place where much of our attention and our action is focused. But we have been denied those buildings for many weeks now. And only now are churches looking to begin to return to worship. And even then, not a normal worship with short services, face masks and no singing. It's church gym, but not as we know it. But the challenge to us over the recent months has been how to be church without a building. And we rediscovered the truth of this passage. That actually it's not the bricks and mortar that determine our faith. That build our church. It's the people. It's us. We are the stones out of which the true church is built. It is how we go together, how we fit together, that determines what the church will look like. And you know, the wonderful thing has been that the church has discovered what it looks like now. And it's a church that operates across boundaries, that has suddenly realised that the bits of technology that the rest of the world has been using for years are actually really good for church as well. It's been a church that has cared for its neighbour. So many stories that I have heard over, over the weeks of people saying, well, I'm just keeping an eye on so-and-so. I'm just giving a phone call to so-and-so. And even the, the wonderful, thoughtful little gifts that have appeared from time to time on the man's doorstep have just lifted spirits sometimes when things have felt quite hard. And that's something we mustn't lose. We must grasp hold of some of those changes that we've made and keep them going as we return to our buildings because we are a royal priesthood. You know, we tend to sometimes use the term a priesthood of all believers without really stopping to think what that means. 
You see, up until Jesus, the only people who had access to God were the priests. And not everybody could become a priest. You had to be born of the right tribe. You had to be selected. And then, and only then, were you worthy to intercede on behalf of the people to God. And only one person, the high priest, once a year, had the opportunity to physically go into God's presence, the Holy of Holies in the Temple of Jerusalem. And he, and it was a he, because female priests were not allowed. He was only allowed that one visit during his time as high priest. But with Jesus that changed. And we all have access to God. When Jesus died, the, the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. The separation between God and human beings was ended. And we all became priests because we all have access to God. And you know, I think we sometimes forget what a joy and a privilege that is. And yet it is that which enables and empowers us through the Holy Spirit to do the work that has been set before us. We are a royal priesthood, those appointed by God to do his work in the world today. And Jesus, Jesus is our cornerstone. Now I'm not a builder. In fact, I seem to have spent these sermons telling you all the things that I'm not, but I'm not a builder. So I didn't know what a cornerstone was or how important it was. But in the days before computer drawings, in the days before blueprints, there was an easy way to make sure that your building turned out right. And that was to put down a cornerstone first and foremost. This cornerstone was measured and true. And it was placed perfectly in position. And then the rest of the building was constructed, measured from that cornerstone. You had to be true to the cornerstone. And that way, your building turned out right, it turned out square, and it all worked perfectly well. We're told in this passage that Jesus is our cornerstone. When you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Jesus was that first foundation of the church that was put down. He was perfect. His teaching was left to us. And that provides the measure that we use when building the church. As we assemble our living stones into the, the living church, we constantly check against Jesus. Are we being true to his teachings? Are we following where he leads? And provided that we keep doing that, then the church that we build will turn out fine. It will be solid, it will be safe, it will be secure, but most of all, it will be fit for the purpose for which it was constructed. The purpose of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to the world today. So as we go forward into the next chapter of Being Church, we need to remember that we are the living stones out of which the church is built. That we are a royal priesthood 
granted the authority and the gifts of the priesthood to serve Jesus and God in this world. And that we have been provided with a cornerstone against which we can measure our building so that we are true to God's calling on us. Amen. Our next hymn is Lord, Speak to Me. And so we come to our time of prayer for others and for ourselves. 
let us pray. Lord God, we come to you in the knowledge that you are able to do more than we can ask or imagine. And so we bring to you our thoughts, our hopes and our requests. We pray for our world at this time, a world which is being decimated by this virus. We pray especially for those in nations that do not have the access to the drugs and the health care that we are blessed with in the West. We pray for those professionals who are caring for the sick. We pray for those involved in research into treatment and into a vaccine for this dreadful virus. We pray for the leaders of the nations, those who have authority and influence, who are seeking to guide us through this uncharted territory. Lord, a heavy burden has been laid upon them. We pray that you will guide them in their thoughts and their decisions, that always at the front of their mind will be the care of the people over whom they have charge. Show them the right decisions to make. We pray for those around us, our families and friends, those amongst whom we live and work. We pray especially for those who have been shielding, who are still taking those early steps back into a more normal life. Those who still live in fear of the virus because of their underlying health conditions. We pray for those whose businesses and livelihoods have been affected by the pandemic. And we pray for those who have lost loved ones, both to this virus and throughout the months of the lockdown, when they have not been able to have a proper funeral. Lord, wherever people are in need, be with them and help them to know your peace and your love. And we pray for ourselves and for our churches. May we become those living stones, building your church, proclaiming your gospel, not just in bricks and mortar, but in words and deeds. May we always be measuring our lives against the cornerstone, which is Jesus, keeping our eyes fixed upon him, that we will know the way and be guided by his love and his Holy Spirit. Because we ask our prayers in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. And so our closing hymn is from all that dwell below the skies.
Well, thank you for joining with us once again. And if this has been a blessing to you, then please do feel free to give us a like uh, at the bottom of the page. Why not follow the page so that you'll know when we put new stuff up in the future? And do feel free to share this with your friends and family. But now we ask God's blessing upon us as we go. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen.